Good evening everyone and welcome to Gundam News. This time brought to you by Buy, the proxy buying service that allows you to buy anything from Japan at the lowest prices in the business. They're compatible with websites like Mercari, Rakuten and Yahoo Auctions, where you can often find awesome gun related items at great prices, including premium Bandai, but they only ship to Japan. And this is where Buy steps in to help you with getting those great deals. You can either browse those websites through the Buy website or the websites themselves and then paste the URL on Buy. Then you simply click the Buy It Now button or the Place Bid button and Buy does the rest. Then once the product arrives at their warehouse, they'll keep it for free for up to 30 days so you can easily combine the shipping of multiple items. And to easily find what you're looking for, here's a Kakarot Pro Tip. Use the Japanese writing of the mobile suit or character you're looking for, which in 99.99% .99 of cases will be listed under Gundam Wiki article. And then when it comes to auctions, this is another one of Bai's big selling points. Their bidding system is instant and you only have to pay once you win. So there's no need to upfront any money for an expensive auction where you're not even sure you're going to win the damn thing. And talking about money, by signing up through the link down below, you'll get 2,000 yen off of your first purchase on Buy. So good luck hunting those deals and moving on to a quick announcement for next week's Gundam news. As I already mentioned, I'll be at the Gundam VIP event at Anime Expo and since this is going to be my first time in America, I will also be staying a few extra days just hang around LA and go see some stuff. So since I won't be back in Belgium until Friday evening, Gundam news will have to be postponed until either Saturday or Sunday depending on how things go. Um, also, I will be at Anime Expo on Monday as well, but as a normal visitor, so maybe I'll see some of you on that day as well. Uh, so, on to our first headline then. Starting July the 1st until the 10th, the life-sized new Gundam will be sporting a slightly different livery. In collaboration with the Fukuoka Softbank Hawks baseball team, the new Gundam will be sporting their logo on its lower legs in celebration of the 2022 Hawk Festival. Which then of course makes me wonder what other kinds of like special celebrations with special liveries will we be seeing in the future. Um, next up then, we have some gaming headlines. After a long, long silence, we finally heard something from the Steam version of Gundam Battle Operation 2. They're temporarily suspending the network test recruitment and the second network test has been postponed. Call me crazy, but I think we were already quite aware of that. As for the rest of the message, it's basically just saying we're sorry, we're working on it, and we'll let you know something as soon as possible. And there's kind of two ways I'm gonna approach this. First of all, this was a test, so I'm not upset by the fact that something went horribly wrong. In fact, it might even be a good thing that things broke now during the test, so that it'll be fixed during the actual launch of the game. So in that sense, I have no doubt they are hard at work at fixing whatever issue popped up during the test. However, would it really have been that difficult to release a statement immediately after the first test that went horribly wrong, saying something amongst the lines of, thank you for playing, thanks to all of you we were able to detect a serious problem that needs immediate fixing, and unfortunately, due to these unforeseen problems, the second test will have to be postponed, and then end with an apology. Instead, they waited over two months just to say, sorry, something went wrong, please wait a bit longer. Yes, we noticed something went wrong. As the Gundam Battle Alliance though is fortunately progressing a lot more smoothly, and today we were introduced to some more characters and mobile suits. 
First up, the main machine is the RGM79GR Gym Gather Road Core Spec. The machine's main goal is to collect battle and operational data, and it's got a cool black color scheme with an emblem based on the Yatagarasu. For the main characters then, there is Yuno Astarte, a programming genius belonging to the GR Corps. Uh, she graduated after being able to skip a class and was then assigned to the GR Corps for collecting and analyzing data on the front lines. Also, she is a childhood friend of the main character, aka the player, so I wonder if this is going to go where I think it's going to go. Uh, she also owns a Haro that she upgraded herself with a learning computer. Nice. Um, so thanks to this, the Haro is capable of talking, well, more complex talking than the average Haro, and can even display emotions. It can also be used as the world's most uncomfortable laptop and can work as a voice assistant. Uh, next up we have Sakura Slash who is actually an AI program with a friendly and positive personality who also acts as a guide of some sort to our main cast. Uh, for example, she'll tell them the history of the various Gundams they encounter. And her model number is Sakura1351420. And on the enemy team then, we have the mysterious Hermes Mercury, who pilots the equally mysterious Gundam Latria? The machine has a plethora of weapons like a rapid beam gun, four megaparticle cannons, a beam bardiche, and beam sabers. And Hermes can take full advantage of these thanks to his excellent piloting skills. He's also adept at programming and acts in a way that suggests that he knows more about what is going on. Unfortunately, there is no word on whether or not he's related to Soleta Mercury. Uh, what they did disclose, though, were some more pilots and their machines that will be appearing in the game. There's the Goof Custom and Norris, the GPO3 and Co, Hyakushiki and Shokuatro, Kshatriya and Merida, the Banshee and Merida, but with a different pilot suit, uh, the Sinanju and Full Frontal, the Epion and Zex, Cheridim and Lockon, Arios and Alleluia, Cerevi and Tieria, Turne and Loran, Destiny and Shin, and finally the Strike Freedom and Kira. And on the Gumpla front then, the Red Giant 3rd MS team has gone up for pre-order alongside all of their details. The set will retail for 6,050 yen, around 50 US, is scheduled for a September release, and the set comes with a bunch of weapons. Six beam sabers, three machine guns, one beam rifle, a 180mm cannon, a bazooka, a gatling gun, net gun, six tube missile launchers, standard ground gym shield, ground gym shield with a claw, pile bunker shield, and another shield-esque thing that comes with heat spikes. Also, for the people in Japan, the set will come with a promotional code that can then be used in the Bonds of the Battlefield 2 arcade game. Unfortunately, for anyone hoping to score the kits now and then use that code at a later date, when we can actually go to Japan as free tourists, they did say that the code will only be valid for a limited time. And then the second thing that is probably Gumpla related, is that Ichiban Kuji has been announced that in mid-November they'll be launching a Witch from Mercury Lottery. And as we've seen in the past, their big prizes are almost always Gumpla related. But only time will tell for certain. And then finally, the ever-expensive Gundarium Alloy RX-78 II has a second round of pre-orders up and was also made available through the Gundam Base and Gundam Side F. And just as a quick reminder in case you'd forgotten, the converted retail price is 1,600 US. Um, on the figure front then, we got all of the details for the Robot Damashi 08th MS Team 3rd optional part set. It'll be releasing in November for 5,500 yen, 40 US, and has a nice variety of items. The big feature is of course the Jet Core booster that comes complete with landing gear, a damaged wing, and a bomb that 
even has a display arm thing to display it as it's being dropped. Then there's a firing effect for the Goof Customs arm mounted gun, a beam effect for slicing it in half, multi purpose explosion effect, and parts to simulate the Easy 8 ripping its arm off. Uh, two more figures then that we got more information on are the Robot Damashi RX783 G3 Gundam and Char's Custom Rig Dom, both real marking version. And from what I understand, both will be limited to the physical Tamashi Nation store in Akiba or members of the Tamashi Nations Club. And even for them, it's a lottery for the right to purchase one. The G3 goes for 7,150 yen, 55 US, and the Rig Dom for 7,700 yen, 60 US. But your only option of getting one of these will probably be through Yahoo Auctions. Over at P Bandai, then, there's a resale for the Mobile Suit Ensemble X06A00 Quanta Full Saber and the X06B00 Gundam Sunriser. And then from China, we're getting a collaboration with Underverse for some really uncanny figures, in my opinion. For 799 yuan, 120 US, there's the very blocky ball, and for 79 yuan a piece, 12 US, there's nine different horrors, of which two are secret colors that aren't shown. And I will say, I do love the overall design and like details that these figures have going on. Um, like, they give a cool post apocalyptic vibe but I would never buy them even if I could. The faces makes them look like something you would put on one end of your bedroom, you go to sleep, you wake up, and it's standing like on your nightstand next to you, staring into your soul. So let's quickly move on to the other Gundam gaming news. Last week Friday, the console network test of Gundam Evolution started, at least for the Japanese and the Americans. Um, on Tuesday, the Gundam Battle Operations series celebrated its 10th anniversary, and for the occasion there is a celebration video, which I will have linked down below, and a daily free supply drop campaign in Gundam Battle Operation 2. And then at the bottom of the post, they also tell us to look forward to the Steam version of GBO2. Perhaps not the best thing to bring up when you're trying to celebrate something. Um, but since we're on the topic of GBO2, today the Sinanju has joined the fray. On Wednesday then, UCN Gage got a new Hathaway's Flash quest, which went alongside a new event gacha featuring the Ultra Rare Xe Gundam and the Ultra Rare Hathaway Noah. And then finally tomorrow, which is today by the time this video goes live in Japan time, the RX-93 FF New Gundam will be joining the Gundam Extreme vs 2 Cross Boost arcade game. Promotional video linked down below. And this week we again have a small dedicated music segment. On the 28th, the Blu-ray of Miss Moriguchi's 35th anniversary concert went up for sale, including extra goods. One day later, it was announced that for the two mixed tribute album Krista Rhythm, Nagi Yanagi will be covering Rhythm Emotion, Nano uh, Truth, A Great Detective of Love, and Aki Okui, Thousand Nights. And then last but not least, the ending theme for mass production Type Rico will be Tsukete Kimitatete, sung by Lingle Planet. Um, in other news then, people who went to Kukuruzuan's Island in theaters, well, Japanese theaters this week, got these really cool film reel-esque freebies, which includes one with the infamous long-faced Gundam. Then people who go to see the two upcoming G-Reco films will also be getting a film reel thingy, but not only will they be getting one from the movie, but it'll also include a random Zambot 3, Die Turn 3, Ideon or Zabungle reel for the fourth movie, and a Dunbine Elgheim brain-powered Overman King Gainer or the Wings of Reen reel for the fifth movie. And then over at the Bandai Hobby Center, they've introduced two new measures to reduce their CO2 emissions. The first one being only getting their electricity from certified renewable sources, and the second one installing their own solar panels. 
Now this should be completed by December and in January of next year they should be in operation. As for the things you could get this week then, last week Friday Mr. Hobby released their Sort Impulse Red and Blast Impulse Green paints and on Saturday the newest lineup of Gundam Universe action figures was released, consisting of the Sazabi for 4730 yen, 35 US, and the Master and Shenlong Gundam for 3300 yen each, 25 US. On to this week's reading material then. There was the August issue of the Monthly TV Guide featuring an interview with Belry Zenam's voice actor, Volume 8 of Gundam Forward, which focuses on Shar's counterattack with, of course, the full-scale new Gundam, the August issue of Hobby Japan featuring a special on Kukuruzawan's Island, the August issue of Model Graphics featuring a special on the high-grade H1 Normal and Master Grade Astrea Type F and Avalanche Dash unit, um, there was the big comic superior in which Gundam Thunderbolt is being serialized, the August issue of Shonen Sunday S in which Gundam Aggressor is serialized, the August issue of Exile um, which has a special on mass production type Rico and the upcoming Rico and Gista NG movies, and finally there was the 21st anniversary issue of Gundam Ace which comes with a beautiful front cover. On to this week's Gundam Apparel then, and starting off with Cospa, who unveiled their latest upcoming collection last week, Thursday. In early September, you can buy shorts for 4,180 yen, 30 US, in either Xeon Attack Force Black or 08th MS Team Deep Navy, and in early October, you can get a polo shirt for the same price in either Xeon Black, Xeon Green, Earth Federation White or Earth Federation Navy. Uh, one day later then, Strict G did a collaboration with May for what they're calling their PC case collection. Now at first this got me really excited because I thought they were going to be releasing like really cool Gundam themed PC cases, like something you build your computer in. But it turns out they actually meant laptop bags. And I don't know if I'm alone here, but I've never heard anyone refer to a laptop bag as a PC case. Like I tried googling it and the only websites that I could find where a laptop bag was called specifically PC case were Japanese websites. But regardless, for 9,900 yen, 75 US, you can get a black Omro, red Neo Zeon, or blue MAFT bag. And then finally, from Bunkore, reservations opened up for four types of muffler towel with case. For 3,850 yen, 30 US, you can either get a set in Federation Blue, Xeon Green, Char Red or White Base White, and they'll be shipping out in August. And also releasing in August is their new large acrylic logo display X for Turn A Gundam, this time with the title in English. It'll set you back 1,650 yen, 12 US, and pre-orders started today. And then let's wrap up this week's Gundam news with the currently ongoing Gundam.info poll and it's another doozy this week. With the upcoming release of the Gumpla bath bombs that um, contain either a goon or a zono, Gundam.info wants to know what our favorite amphibious mobile suit is. Which to me sounds like they're basically asking like, hey, if this bath bomb thing is successful, what do you want uh, the next mobile suit we put in it to be? And frankly, the selection here really makes no sense whichever way you look at it. Last week with the mass production models, like I joked about, imagine four mobile suits, like imagine four mass production mobile suits and at least two of them are going to be on the list. If I were to tell you now, imagine four amphibious mobile suits, I highly doubt you would even get one right because I almost feel like they went out of their, out of their way to pick the four most obscure machines they could find with one exception, and that is of course the one that is in the lead. Um, the Ash with 173 votes. 
which is then followed by the Galguyu with 81 votes, the Rosso with 78, and the amazing Pescatore with 64. Seriously? We're just going to ignore the Agai, Zagok, Hygog, Gog, Mermaid Gundam? Really? We're gonna ignore those? Uh, and even if they were going for mobile suits that didn't already have a model kit, there were still better options out there. Like the Cancer and the Pisces, the Aqua Gym, the aforementioned Mermaid Gundam, of course, and then something like the Zaku Marine type if you're not counting the two old kits from the 80s. But anyways, that has been all for this week's Gundam news. I gotta go pack my bags for LA. <laughs> Don't forget to check out this week's sponsor by with the link down below. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great day, and I'll see you all next week with more Gundam news. Thank you.